G'day YouTube. I'm doing a quick follow-up video. This is following on from my teardown and review of this cheap little transistor slash component tester, which I got from eBay. Um, there'll be a link to the video here, down below. You can click on that. Check it out. A viewer asked whether this was capable of testing germanium transistors, and I hadn't tried that or shown that in my previous video. So I thought I'd give it a go. I'd see if I could scrounge some up, and I found a couple here. Um, they're the same type, so these are germanium transistors, and they're AC128. So I'll check out a data sheet in a second and show you that. Um, but germanium transistors, if you don't know about these things, they're an older technology. They're sort of like late 60s, I guess, 70s sort of technology. Um, they use germanium as their semiconducting material, whereas these days we use like a highly purified silicon. Um, it's cheaper, it's more readily available. Germanium is, is a rarer material. And also the newer silicon type um, semiconductors are a lot more um, consistent. So you'd get these germanium transistors and they'd all be a slightly little bit different here and there. So you'd sort of, um, you'd have to deal with that. Um, but the reason why these things still are in demand and you can still find these things is because um, they're used for audio applications. So um, the idea is that if you're building a, gu a guitar effects pedal or a distortion of some sort, um, these have a warmer, nicer feel. It's less harsh um, and it's more pleasing to the ear. That's so the story goes. Whereas the newer uh, silicon-based transistor um, devices are a bit harsher and things. So it, it, I guess it's sort of like the tube amp versus silicon amp. It's the same sort of idea where um, these have a certain vintage feel to them. So they're still available. So we'll get down to it now. I'll, I'll quickly show you the data sheet and then we'll plug it into the, the tester and we'll see how it goes. So I found this page here, which is at alltransistors.com and this is the AC128 and it's telling us it's a PNP transistor and it's of type GE, which is a germanium transistor. So we can expect that my little testing device, my little uh, component tester will tell us that it's PNP. Um, and the other thing that it should tell us is the HFE, um, which is down here, forward current transistor ratio HFE, and it says minimum 45. So, but we can at least check to see that our value is greater than 45 and that it tells us a PNP. There's also a data sheet here, which I'll show you now. And here's the data sheet, all in German, and I don't know German, so we'll struggle through this together, but we've got germanium PNP AC128, so it looks like we've got the right data sheet here. Um, now this diagram here matches the component I have pretty well and it's giving us the pinout. So we've got emitter base collector and the component tester that I have will specify this. So we can confirm that with this data sheet and just check that it is giving us the correct pinout. Uh, just an interesting thing here I noticed there's these sort of uh, extra little add-on parts and they look like um, mounting sort of options. So you can have a transistor through this sideways perhaps um, and then the pins would come out or you could have two here and then um, fix them to a board or um, to a case or something so it looks like this is sort of like separate little um, mounting options for the part and we've got some maximum uh, or some absolute uh, ratings here and on page two here we've got all the stats and parameters that I'm sure would be very interesting and meaningful for someone who could decipher this Unfortunately, I'm not going to delve into that very deep, but you can pause the video here and, and try your luck. Um, your German may be better than mine. So this is the device here. As you can see, it's like a very old school little middle can. It's got the tab there for orientation. And you might be able to just read what's written on the side. So it's got like a little, like a 18 perhaps. There's a logo there. And it's got VI. There you go. And you can see underneath it says, AC128 and it's in an old school metal can and it's got this little tab to sort of give you orientation and you can see under there um, there's our three pins coming out the bottom of that. And I've got two of these so they, they are the same type of transistor and I'm going to plug one in now and I'll just make sure I get the leads in different uh, columns here again so you've got the one, two, three and we'll click the test button and see what happens. 
testing. BJT, PNP, there you go. So it's a bipolar junction transistor, PNP, and it's telling us 123 is collector base emitter. And from memory, that is correct from the data sheet because we were looking at it from the bottom. This is now flipped to the other way. HFE of 66, and we had a minimum of 45, so that looks good. And uh, VF, I think that's forward voltage of 99 millivolt. Um, so that sounds good. So that, that seems to be working. Um, I'll plug the next one in now and see how close these things are together and see if this one works as well. So there it is. Give it a test. BJT, PNP, it's collector base emitter again, one, two, three. Uh, HFE of 58, so it is a little bit different. And our VF is also quite different. Um, again, it is above 45, so this may just be the characteristics of the transistors again, where they're not completely consistent. Um, and so from what I've heard, people would buy a bunch of these things, and if they're getting serious into their audio equipment and audio engineering, they'd buy a batch of these and they'll test each one and try and match them and, and um, characterize the components individually instead of just trusting the data sheet as um, we tend to sort of do today with the more modern transistors. So that's another win for the uh, transistor tester here.